Did you know that we're currently living in an ice age? It's true. Earth is currently smack dab in the middle of a quaternary glaciation, a 2.5 million year long period of advancing and retreating glaciers. For the last 11,000 years, we've been enjoying a brief warm spell, and that 11,000 year thaw has made possible the entire history of human civilization. Everything ever written or carved, every king and queen, god and demon, every city, every empire, all of it exists inside one tiny blip in one short epoch in the endless 4.5 billion year story of this planet, which is just one of trillions. Kinda makes you think, doesn't it? Maybe we don't have the best sense of what time is or how the events of our lives fit into it. It's an uncomfortable thought, but it's worth exploring. Welcome to History Snob. Can you imagine Salvador Dali listening to Michael Jackson or someone witnessing an execution by guillotine and then getting a movie ticket to see the original Star Wars? These things sound crazy, but they actually could have happened. They're just a few examples of how our perception of time is completely wrong. Time is a strange thing. Sometimes it seems to stand still, and other times centuries of advancement happen in the blink of an eye. In a single lifetime, some people experience the Wright brothers' first flight, two world wars, and the moon landing. However, when we look back on history, we tend to compartmentalize events so that they seem generations apart. Take, for example, the life of some very famous artists. Pablo Picasso changed the art world forever with the birth of the Impressionist movement. He first started painting at the turn of the 20th century, with his earliest compositions being works like The Old Guitarist, which was completed in 1903. His most famous work, Le Rêve, was completed at the start of the Great Depression in 1932. So naturally, we tend to think of the artist as synonymous with things like the Jazz Age. But Picasso lived a long life and continued continued to work. His painting The Kiss was completed in 1969, which means he could have been painting it while also watching the moon landing or news about the Vietnam War live on television. The same goes for Salvador Dali. Dali was known for his paintings and photographs that captured the surrealist and absurd. The Persistence of Memory is the world-famous melting clock composition. He finished it in 1931. However, this was only the beginning of his long career. In his life, Dolly went from making silent films, to collaborating with Walt Disney on a failed animation, to almost being in the first big budget adaptation of Dune. In fact, Dolly passed away in January 1989, meaning he could have seen the premieres of both The Wizard of Oz and the entire Star Wars trilogy. Speaking of Star Wars, we tend to think of the first three as timeless classics, almost separate from the era they were released. The first film premiered in 1970 77 and took the world by storm. It was undoubtedly a watershed moment in history. However, Star Wars shared that year with a few things that we would consider archaic. In fact, 1977 was the last year that the French government executed someone by guillotine. Yes, the French were still using the device that was so synonymous with the bloody revolution of the late 1700s. Many people, including the infamous Marie Antoinette, lost their lives at the end of the large blade of the guillotine. However, she was far from the last. The device was used for the next two centuries, with a jaw-dropping eight executions happening between the years 1965 and 1977. That means, at the same time the condemned were being led to their execution at the hands of the falling blade, Richard Nixon was fighting for his life in the Watergate scandal. While the guillotine was last used in 1977, it wasn't officially outlawed till 1981, the same year the first space shuttle launched. In fact, space travel is about the most modern accomplishment when it comes to humanity, but it has a lot of overlap with things we now consider to be ancient history. The Wright brothers set mankind on the path to the stars with their first flight in 1903. Their flying machine looks laughable by modern standards, like something no sane person would fly in. But it was only 66 years between this picture and this footage of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Orville Wright himself lived a long time after he and his brother invented the airplane. He passed away at 76 in 1948. That means the man who invented flight lived long enough to see the first rockets 
the V1 and V2 models, launched at Britain by Germany. By the time he died, the space program was already well underway, and the computer revolution was just beginning. Or was it really? What we think of as a modern computer actually has its roots as far back as the early 1800s. Charles Babbage was an English engineer and Renaissance man who first conceptualized a functioning programmable computer in 1822. He published his design in a paper to the Royal Astronomical Society, and it quickly caught the attention of the academic community. It would take well over a hundred years before his exact design was constructed as a proof of concept in 1991. However, his designs would influence Alan Turing in 1945 with the ENIAC system used to crack German codes. That's 123 years between the idea of the computer and its creation, meaning that what we think of as the computer is older than both flight and more surprisingly, cinema. If we're talking about cinema, then we should talk about its absolute peak, Jurassic Park. This series has often muddled the history of prehistoric beasts by forgetting that dinosaurs ruled the earth for 165 million years. Many of the most famous dinosaur species lived shockingly far apart in time. Take Stegosaurus and the fearsome T-Rex. As kids, we always bang their two action figures together, but in actuality, they are separated by thousands of millennia. This Stegosaurus actually lived about 75 million years before the Tyrannosaurus emerged. Dinosaurs died out around 65 million years ago, so that means we live far closer in time to the T-Rex than the Stegosaurus ever did. And they aren't the only extinct species that have some kind of overlap with our own. The woolly mammoth is one of the most iconic when we think of long dead species. Sure, it was actually alive at the same time as cavemen, but they had long died off before any actual attempts at civilization happened right? Actually, no. The Egyptian empire was already in full bloom when the last fluffy elephant passed on. One of the biggest icons of this empire is the mighty Sphinx. While we can still see it today, the Sphinx is so old, it had already stood for a thousand years by the time the woolly mammoth went extinct. Egypt in general forces us to consider what the phrase, a long time, actually means. Ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for about 3,000 years. The known pyramids were built over the course of about 1,100 years. The last one was completed in 1525 BC. Then consider Cleopatra, the last ruler of ancient Egypt. She died in 30 BC. That means Cleopatra lived about as close to the building of the last pyramid as she lived to the invention of the printing press in 1440. When Cleopatra and Mark Antony were swooning over each other, the oldest pyramids were already 2,500 years old. Yes, Cleopatra, Mark Antony, and Julius Caesar lived far closer to the invention of TikTok than they did to the building of the first pyramid. Speaking of TikTok, our perception of time can be equally skewed when it comes to more recent events. We already discussed discuss Star Wars. Another surprising fact about those movies involves the once derided sequel trilogy. Return of the Jedi was released in 1983, while The Phantom Menace was released in 1999. That's a gap of 16 years, meaning we are now a decade further away from Phantom Menace than it was from Return of the Jedi. Other seemingly modern pop culture icons are now almost a century old. Godzilla, for example, recently celebrated his 70th anniversary. The Big Lizard has nothing on another Japanese icon, however. The Nintendo Gaming Company, or simply Nintendo, has been a powerhouse in video games since the release of the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1983. That's 42 years ago. However, the company has been around far longer. Nintendo was first founded as a playing card company, and Nintendo brand cards were first sold in 1889. This means that Nintendo was founded the same year that Vin Vincent Van Gogh painted his famous masterpiece, Starry Night. It's also the same year that Washington became a state and pizza was invented. Nintendo isn't the only company that's older than you think. Only a few years prior, John Pemberton invented a soft drink that would change the world forever. Coca-Cola was created when the pharmacist perfected the syrup that would be used to craft the beverage. He first distributed his concoction in 1886. This means that theoretically, Van Gogh could have celebrated the completion of his new painting by having a Coke 
and playing some Nintendo? And what about some of the technology we take for granted these days? We already discussed the computer, space travel, and even film. But what about the more mundane? The fax machine may seem rather archaic today, having mostly been replaced by email and text. But the fax machine is even older than you think. What we think of as a fax system was first patented in 1846. Sure, it was far from refined and was way more basic than the machine currently gathering dust in your home office, but it was still functional. This means that Abraham Lincoln could have received a fax from Robert E. Lee at the height of the Civil War. There are some other strange facts about America that gives us pause. We all know Harvard is an old college, but did you know Galileo was still alive when Harvard was built in 1636? Harvard is also older than one of the things you probably had to study to get in there. Calculus didn't exist until Harvard was almost 50 years old. Another American institution was part of history for longer than we might imagine. Disney World opened in 1971, the same year the oldest living former slave, Sylvester McGee, passed away. So why is time so hard to wrap our heads around? Venerated scientist and author Carl Sagan once presented a thought experiment in which the entire history of everything was condensed down into a single calendar year. If we do that, the entire history of humanity from caveman to smartphone would exist only within the last seconds of the last minute of the last day of the year. It becomes existentially unfathomable just how quickly humanity has advanced and just how far we have come in such a short time. Maybe this is why we tend to expand things out into separate ages. It's a way to internally scale time so that we can better perceive it. However, this causes problems when it comes to how we remember history and how old we tend to think things actually are. We think of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and so on with having their own distinct styles, music, cinema, and even specific historical events. Now when we look back, it becomes hard to imagine a world where Nintendo, Coca-Cola, and the fax machine shared space with Samurai, the Wright Brothers, and even Vincent Van Gogh. What surprised you most about this perspective on history and time? Do you know any other people and things that amazingly existed at the same time? Leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos from History Snob.